Well, good morning. How about it? It's here. He is risen. It's wonderful. It's a great day. Good to see everybody this morning. We've got a few announcements to make. And love the Easter hats. Love the color. Man, you guys just look too good to be here today. I'm telling you. Y'all look wonderful. Uh, we got ladies' birthday luncheon coming up April 4th at 1130 at Rolo's. See Miss Sailor if you got any questions about it. And again, I, uh, I challenge you men. It's coming up April 4th, 630, men's huddle. Any man that hasn't been there, or if you've been there before, please come again. We're going to eat, fellowship, have a good time. Uh, that just about covers it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your resurrection. Lord, thank you for all the people that are here today and the ones that can't be here that are looking in, Father, from, uh, from the web. Lord, forgive us where we always fail you on certain days, Lord, but make this day special that we glorify you today, showing our glory to you, Father, for your kingdom. Forgive us where we failed you. Get us back here safely. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Oh, almost forgot. If you're a first-time visitor and you see this little tear-out portion here, put your name in there, put a prayer in there, whatever you want to put on it, put it in the plate as it comes around. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Easter. Will you stand with me? We're going to do like the early church did, and I'm going to say, Jesus is risen, and you're going to respond, he is risen indeed. Let's try it. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Very good. Let's sing together and express our joy and our thanks to the Lord. <coughs> Death cannot be 
Let's stay again. Let's continue our worship with How Great Thou Art.
Our next song will be a little chorus of Praise the Name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be in your house once again to give you all the glory that you solely deserve. We just ask that your grace just fill this room and fill every heart in this room to give us your Holy Spirit to carry out the good news, the good word of your son Jesus that uh, rose from the grave and is living in us all over. I just ask that uh, the blessing that the, we are about to receive, that you use this to bless it, to spread out the, this blessing that you have bestowed upon us and spread it out to the people that don't know that your son is alive and well. It's all these things we pray in your son's awesome name, Jesus. Amen.
Stand with me once again. We've reached the fellowship time of our service, and we're going to sing a verse of that glad reunion day, and then take a few moments to greet everyone and make sure everybody's been welcomed. And then after that, um, the children will go to Children's Church during the song, and then we'll sing the last verse just before Mylan comes to preach, that glad reunion day. to greet one another.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, now that we come to the time of breaking of the bread and bringing your word to your cross, Lord, hide the smiling behind the cross, Lord. Give him the new, give him the freshness, all the things that he studied through, Lord. Let it be your will, these words to, to someone's heart that's out there watching, Lord. Father, we, we want this day to be special. We want you in our hearts today, Lord. We ask these things. Forgive us where we fail. All these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, you join me this morning in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Matthew, chapter 28. Um, as we look at the um, resurrection of Jesus, it's covered in all four Gospels. Um, and we need to understand as we read the, the, the story of the resurrection, uh, and I've been going back and forth in all four Gospels, and uh, you had um, Matthew and John were two of the disciples, so they were part of the resurrection story, so they had a little firsthand experience. And also Mark and Luke, they were just sharing in the Gospels the things that had been revealed to them. So as you read those, they'll be a little bit, they don't contradict one another, but they sort of have a different look at, at the resurrection day. And I don't want to just sort of bore you to death uh, today, we're just over and over the difference between all four Gospels, but each and every one of the Gospels really share the celebration of Jesus' re uh, return, and the title this morning is, Where is Jesus Today? The problem was, they didn't know where Jesus was, and when we don't know where Jesus is, you know what it does? It causes a lot of troubles in our lives, it causes a lot of hopelessness in our lives, and it causes us to be scared and frightened about things that we shouldn't be afraid of. We have hope when we know where Jesus is today. So I want to talk about where is Jesus today. I like to say this. They, had, they woke up Easter morning with a lot of problems in the, on the hand. A lot of problems. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I like what it said in Isaiah. It says, remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing now, and you shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, a river in the desert. He said, I'm going to give you a new day. My goal today for my life and for your life, that this be a new day. A new day of springing forth with Jesus in the midst and knowing where Jesus is. Let me just read the story here in Matthew real quickly. It said, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake from the, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. As I stop there for a minute, if you were to turn to Mark's gospel, and we won't do that, it, it said in Mark's gospel that they were on their way to the tomb and they were questioning one another, what are we going to do when we get there? There's a big stone over the grave. How are we going to anoint his body with that big old stone there? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It, isn't that amazing? We worry about things we ought not to worry about sometimes. You know what? They were worrying about how to get that stone out. It had already been done. 
You may wonder what you're going to do. God's already made the way possible for you. God's already opened the doors. He's opened the doors of the prison that may hold you back. He's already taken care of it, and they're worrying about things they shouldn't worry about. Do you like to be around people that worry? I don't. I like to be around people that are celebrating, not people that are worrying. We need to quit our worrying and say this is a new day, not a day of worrying and fretting over stuff. This is a day of celebrating that Jesus is bringing forth something new. It says in his countenance, as they came and found that the stone had been rolled away and found this angel sitting upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his raiment's white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angels answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come see the place where the Lord led. Well, now, if I were to turn to the Gospel of Luke sharing this story, basically, it's a little different thing. It said, What are you looking for that living among the dead? Why are we going to be looking for Jesus in the grave? He's alive. But they didn't understand that. The angel knew what they were doing. They were looking for Jesus. But when I say they were looking for Jesus, they had limited what Jesus could do for them. They had limited what Jesus could do for them. You think people do that today? We limit what Jesus can do for us? We say, you can't handle my problem. You can't handle this situation. You're dead to my situation. But the angel saying, he's not dead. He's alive. He is risen. He said, now that you know that he is risen, go quickly and tell the disciples and he, that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. And lo, I have told you. They departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Can you imagine the journey these ladies are making to the disciples? You think they were, well, let's go see the disciples. I believe they were running because I believe they were younger than me. I believe they couldn't wait to tell the story. That's the way we ought to be when we recognize what Jesus has done for us, what he can do for other folks. We should be eager to tell people about Jesus. We're not eager to preach at people, but we're eager to share Jesus is alive. Your hope, your answer is here. Your answer is here. So they left. They went quickly to tell the disciples. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail or greetings. And they came and beheld him by his feet and worshipped him. And when uh, then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell your brothers that you go into Galilee. There shall, there shall they see me. And when they had gone Behold, some of the watchmen came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, and saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were told and taught. And these sayings is commonly reported among the Jews even unto this day. And the eleven disciples went away into Galilee into the mountain which Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the world. So if we want to talk about where 
is Jesus today. I can say one thing with assurance. There's some places I know he's not. There's some places that I know Jesus is not. One of the things, if I looked at the gospel of Luke chapter 22, or 23, verse 20, let me read that passage real quickly. It says, and Pilate, therefore, willing to re uh, release Jesus, spake again to them, but they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said, he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified in the voice of them and the chief priests prevailed. They wanted him killed. Well, I can tell you one of the things I know about Jesus, where he's not today, he's not on trial. He went before a trial, and it was a trial that was rigged, a trial that was unjust, and he was falsely accused. I do know today Jesus isn't on trial. We need to remember that. A lot of people seem to think that Jesus needs to answer for a lot of things that they think he should have done or done differently. I can tell you, I know today he's not on trial. One of the other things I know today, as they took him in chains, they beat him and whipped him and placed that cross upon his shoulder to carry to the, uh, to the crucifixion. I know one thing for sure today. My Christ is not bound today. No one has power over him. No one is keeping him back from doing what he wants to do today. There's no one keeping him from doing something for me today or doing something for you today. He is not bound today. I do know he is not there. I do know also that he's not on that cross. I think about when he was on that cross. The Gospel of Luke shares a little more about that. It says, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They parted his raiments, and they cast their lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also were them, deriding him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. If he be Christ, he is a cho uh, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar and told him to let him alone. If he be the king of Jews, let him save himself. I know one thing today. I know he's not on the cross. And I know something else today. He's not dead. I know he's not in that tomb. It, it gives us today. You can go back to, uh, and visit the tomb that was there, I know he's not dead. People saw him. He's doing certain things. He's not in the grave today. But let me tell you, I know those places he's not. Let me tell you the places where I know he is today. Where is Jesus today? I know one thing, according to the scriptures, he is on the throne next to the Father, sitting there being inter making intercessions for you and I. He's watching over us. Not only do I know he's in, in heaven upon the throne, He's in my heart today because he's here comforting me. He is protecting me. He is guiding me in the steps that I should uh, take and the decisions I need to make. I know where Jesus is today. Knowing where Jesus is, it is so important. This is a day to remember. It's a day. It's not a day for unbelief. It's a day of believers. It's, a day, it's not a day of hopelessness. It's a day of opportunity. It's a day of happiness, hope, and future. Depends on Jesus today. We need Jesus in our life. So as we look at a few folks real quickly, Mary Magdalene and the other lady. But Mary Magdalene, she was a very special lady. When I say she was a special lady, I'm not going to say she went to the uh, biggest colleges and she had the most money of any lady and she was the most beautiful woman. This was a woman that had devils that lived in her life, seven of them to be exact. Can you imagine having seven devils living in your life? Causing you problems. And Jesus cast them out of her life. She was indebted to Jesus. So when she was going to the tomb to anoint his body, all her hope was gone. This is the one that delivered me from the devils, keeps the devils out of my life, 
gives my life hope. Now my hope is gone. This is who Mary Magdalene was. She was, she was wondering what she was going to do. And when she gets there, you know what she found? She found an empty tomb. Now, a he- an empty tomb is not something that can really excite you. What can really excite you is later on we'll find that for Magal- Mary Magdalene, she saw Jesus. Empty tomb is one thing. If you were to go over here to the graveyard and all of a sudden your loved one that maybe you'd buried, you find that the, the grave's been opened up and there's no casket in there, you can say, that's something. But it's nothing like seeing that someone that was in that tomb. Oh, she was excited. I mean, she wanted to tell that story. I know to Mary Magdalene, it changed her life when she found Jesus still alive. She went from crawling on her belly, basically, to jumping and praising the Lord. He is alive. He is alive. The excitement. I think I've shared this story before, but I had a lady one time in one of the churches I pastored that... uh, I went to see her, and after I left, she died. She died. They come in. They was working with her, and the chaplain came in with the, her husband, and they, finally he pulled away before they pronounced her dead, and they called, called me to tell me she was gone, wanted me to go to her mother's house and tell her mother that she had died. I go to her mother's house, elderly lady, and, and I tell her that her daughter had died. And it was, it was, it was just heart-crushing. She had lost her daughter. She lost her daughter. Well, she asked me if I could call some of the other family because she said, I just can't do it, preacher. Can you do it for me? So I'm on the phone. I'm calling the other family members, calling everybody, sharing it. She had died. And all of a sudden, I, I see my wife. She drives up in the driveway and come, knocks at the door and tells me, come here. I said, what? She come here. They just called from the hospital. She's not dead. She's alive. I thought, what? I mean, I'll be, I had to say, I didn't have the right response because I'm sitting here thinking, I've done told all these people she's dead. Let's leave it alone. But she, I had to go back in. I told her mother, I said, I just got word she's not dead. She's alive. Can you imagine the mood change of that woman when she heard that her dead daughter is alive? I mean, she went from tears of mourning to tears of rejoicing. And she told me, preacher, you go to the hospital. You go down there to the hospital. So I jump in the car I'm headed to the hospital, and I, I'll be honest, I still didn't believe. I'm like the other we're going to find about the disciples. It's just hard to believe, isn't it? I had a hard time believing. I, I believe in my heart, my mind, I'm thinking, they've just put her on a ventilator, and there's a machine pumping her heart, and they, you know, and breathing for her. She's not really alive. They're just sustaining her with a machine. That's what I really thought in my mind. And I was a little aggravated because I had done start getting her to accept that her daughter's dead. And now I give her this hope. And I believed it was false hope. I'm confessing. And I go to the hospital and I go into intensive care. And, and I go in expecting a woman on a ventilator and she ain't breathing for her. And I go in and she's looking at me. Setting up in the lies. There's got to be an explanation. It didn't really change their mood. But Mary... Guess what she had an experience? She got to see with her own eyes. See with her own eyes. We need to experience it. Folks, we can't can't share it until we've experienced it, until we start really believing that he's alive. So we talk about one person, about the resurrection of Jesus, how it changed Mary Magdalene's life. I'll tell you another some other folks I want to talk about, the soldiers that they put to guard the tomb. You know, they, they, had, they had heard Jesus say that on the third day he's going to resurrect again, and they'd heard him claim to do it. They didn't believe he was going to do it, but yet they want to make sure he stayed dead. 
So they put him in a tomb. They sealed the tomb with this big stone, and they put guards at it to keep anybody from getting that body because they kind of believed that somebody might come along and steal the body and claim that he's alive. So they had all bases covered. Now, can you imagine getting the job to standing at the tomb and keeping people away? You're the soldiers. You represent Rome. You can, you, you've got authority. So they were sitting here, nobody's going to get in here. And sure enough, nobody's going to get out of here, but you ain't going to get in here. But it, what did it say? All of a sudden, an earthquake came, and it moved the stone away. Those soldiers are standing there thinking, it's an earthquake, and they look around, the, the, the rock had rolled away. That was one thing, but all of a sudden they saw the angel of God in his brightness and in, 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 in his glory from God. It was so powerful. If you remember Saul, when he was on the ro road to Damascus, it was so bright, shining, that he fell upon his face. It was so bright and glorious, they fell like dead men. They fainted. <laughs> they just fell out. These are soldiers. Soldiers aren't supposed to faint. They thought that they, they're more powerful than anything else. But they found that there's a greater power than they were. There was greater power than those soldiers. They fell as dead men. And if you read the story a little bit later there, what did he care about him? He said, oh, well, after they realized he's gone, they said, we're going to we're gonna have to go we're going to have to go answer for ourselves. So they go and they start telling the story about what happened. It was an earthquake. The stone rolled away, and it was empty. Jesus wasn't in there anymore. And this angel came and presented himself. Shh, we don't need people to know that, do we? We don't need them to know the power of God, the awesomeness of God. He says in verse 11, it said, Now when they were going... Behold, some of the watchmen came unto the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldier. Now, I like that where it emphasized. He didn't say they just gave money. It gave them a large amount of money. A large amount of money. You may come out there, you know, you may say, hey, Preacher, I'll give you $100 for your truck. You ain't getting the truck. We'll give you $1,000 for your truck. You ain't getting my truck. Preacher, we'll give you a million dollars for your truck. It's your truck. You can imagine, they gave them a, look, we're going to give you enough that you're going to go with a story that we're going to give you. You're not going to go with that story you just told. Because you tell that story, it's going to change some lives. It's going to mess some things up. We want to keep this under wrap. That's what's wrong with this world today. We've kept it under wrap too long that Jesus is alive and Jesus can make a difference in your life. So they did what? They took the money and went with a lie. Folks, this world today would like to tell you a lie. And a lot of people would rather have the lie and the money than the truth. But you know how long that's going to last, don't you? That money's going to get spent. If you can't spend it, your wife can spend it. If your wife can't spend it, your kids can spend it. If they can't get it, your grandkids can get it. It can be gone. But one thing about it, nobody can take Jesus away from you. There's enough of Jesus to take care of all the problems and all the things that we have. We just need to know where he is today. So we talked about Mary Magdalene. Talked about the soldiers a little bit. And, and, and one of the other, some of the other gospels talked about the two men on the road to Emmaus. You know, the, the story about Jesus' resurrection, it's began to, from the early morning, as the day went, it was starting to grow. I can't imagine if cell phones were back in the day of Jesus' resurrection, they'd had to shut down the towers, we'd have burn them up. Trying to tell the story about Jesus' resurrection. I mean, they were talking about it. People were starting to talk. I love it when people start talking about Jesus, don't you? 
They were talking about the story, but yet they still hadn't really con conceived it. They really hadn't accepted it. They really hadn't uh, feasted upon it. They were talking about this story, and all of a sudden a stranger comes along, and he's walking with them, and they don't even recognize Jesus was right there. You come to a service kind of like this, or you even go to your home and you don't think Jesus is there, but he's there. We need to know where Jesus is. If I knew he was right there with me, I might watch what I say a little bit. I might be a little more careful about my attitude a little bit if I knew Jesus was right there. But he's walking along with him. These two guys uh, get to telling him, is Jesus said, why are y'all so sad? Have you not heard? They crucified Jesus. They buried him, and somebody has come along and stole him out of the tomb. And Jesus said, really? They stole him out of the tomb? Maybe you've been misinformed. Maybe a many, of us, many of us today have been misinformed about what Jesus can do and is doing, that Jesus really is alive. He's not a, a, just a, a story that people talk about. This is an actual person actually walk in here with us and they didn't even realize it that's sort of the way it was with Mary Mary said that when she was there at the tomb and this man came up she thought was a gardener and he really won't know why you're so sad I think he asked us that today why are we so sad why are we worried about problems that we got I'm right here with you I'm right here with you not only that, if you remember that 20th verse I read a while ago in Matthew, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. He is with us. If you back up a little bit further in verse 18, it says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. There's nothing I can't do. God gives me the authority. The Father gives me the authority to do whatever I need to do for you. And I'm right here with you. And she was thinking, just talking to a gardener, she thought. And all of a sudden, you know what Jesus did? He called her by name and said, Mary. She recognized that voice. And he called her name. I got to believe today that he's calling some of your names today. By name. And you recognize that voice. That voice speaks to you. Say, I'm right here with you. And I have power over whatever you are facing today. Do you remember also, we tell the story about Mary Magdalene and the soldiers and the two men walking on the road to Emmaus. Then we were reminded of the disciples. These are the men that walked with Jesus every day. Walked with Jesus every day. Saw the miracles of Jesus every day. Feeding the 5,000. Healing the blind. Giving, uh, the, healing the crippled. Doing so many different things. And they hear the story that he's alive. And yet they doubt it. They doubt it. And the bad thing was, when Jesus came, verse 17 of Matthew, it said, and when they saw him, they worshiped him, but it, the next phrase just blows my mind. But some doubted. Even after seeing Jesus, after hearing Jesus, they still doubt. It's so hard for some people. And all, let me tell you something. The only way God can't save you, the only way God can't bless you, the only way God can't do great things for you is for you to doubt and have unbelief today. For by grace are you saved through faith. You've got to believe that he's real. You've got to believe that he can handle the problems that we put upon him and take care of all things. It's hard. But if we'll believe, change can take place. It said what happened after that, they became an exciting witness. Folks, we need to be excited. So many folks leave church, but they're not excited. So many people leave church complaining about one thing after another. Talking about one thing after another. But excitement? You know, we can get, exci get excited over a lot of ball, ball games that our kids are playing in. We can get excited about a lot of things because you experienced it. 
You experience the crowd roaring, the excitement in your heart, the celebration. But folks, this is the way Easter should be. We should be celebrating. It should change our life. It should direct our life. That's what he told them to do. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. We need to observe what God has for us because this is the day. So I do know where Jesus is today. And by knowing where Jesus is today, I'm at peace. Folks, today, if you're worried about anything, what did Jesus tell them? Be not afraid. If we know he's there and we accept his presence, we know we have nothing to worry about and nothing to fear. We come to an invitation time today. What do we do with the invitation time? Can you imagine if there was an invitation given to the disciples after Jesus had presented himself, they recognized he was there. Can you give an invitation to Mary Magdalene? Would she just say, I, I just, would she just sing? Or would she fall down and say, I just want to thank you. My hope was gone, but now it's here. I just want to thank you for what you've done for me. The salvation that you provide. I thank you for going with me everywhere I go. Going with me everywhere I go. I had a uh, situation one time I was visiting. I uh, was having a church party at one of the houses that I was at. And the neighbors was got into a big fight. Husband and wife, they fight. And they asked, said, Preacher, what you going to do? I'm thinking, me? I'm not the biggest dude here. So I'm thinking, well, I got to do something. So I said, I need to go over and talk to them folks. But you know what I did before I went? I turned around and got the two biggest dudes in the room to come on and go with me. I didn't want to go by myself. I sure didn't want that man, and I didn't really want the woman either. I didn't want neither one of them jumping me. So I took the two men. It was two of them. I figured they can jump two of them, not me. I want Jesus to go with me everywhere that I go. Maybe I just need to ask him today to go with me. Maybe you need to ask him to go with you today. You've never done that. And you're not sure where he's at today. You know, Mary and Martha, they was wondering why Jesus wasn't there when their brother died here. But we need to recognize he's where he needs to be. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful. And we need you today. And you're available today because you are alive. We know where you're at. We know it because some... Some of us here this morning feel you tugging at our heart to guide the paths of our feet. There's some of us that need to go places you want us to go. Just as you sent Mary to the disciples, you sent the disciples to Galilee. Wherever you send us, I pray today that we go. I pray, Lord, that we follow your guidance today, and we thank you for all you've done. There's nothing for us to fear but to believe in you. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask. Amen. If you'll stand together with me. We don't need to accept anything that this world has to offer. We just need to accept the truth, and the truth is Jesus Christ. If you need to respond today in any way, you respond to this word with the direction of God as we sing this song. Just as you need to respond to today. You need to lay something on the altar today. Maybe it's someone you need to pray for. Maybe you just need to lift them up to Jesus today. Because maybe the Lord's directing you today for maybe church membership. Maybe for salvation. Or maybe a calling, a commitment. You follow the Lord today as He directs you. the birth if you need to respond in any way because he is alive he has a listening ear he has a guiding spirit as we follow his direction today
a joy it is to be here today and be in God's house. It's a joy to be in his presence today. And it's a joy to have you visiting with us today. If you're a guest today, we're glad that you're here. Glad for our members being here. I was glad for the choir this morning. They did a fabulous job this morning. The choir just keeps growing and everything's doing great. Uh, God's blessed us. Uh, anyone have a word before we dismiss this morning? Who we got? Larry? Brother Larry, dismiss us prayer, please. Almighty God, Lord, uh, thank you for this day. We thank you that we can rejoice in the, the assurance of a risen Savior, Father. Lord, don't let it end with just this day. Let us rejoice and, and uh, show Christ in us all during our, the rest of our lives, Father, each and every day to witness to others. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for what you've done, what Christ has done, Father. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen.